everyone, it's your girl again, TJ Sunimi or Lakujo. TJ for short. So I'm here at the Taste of African event. Uh, I'm very fortunate and lucky enough to have my pictures to be showcased today. And guess what? I'm going to be interviewed by Sharon Costini, the creative director and face painter of these pictures. She's going to be asking me about what these tribal marks uh, represent, the concept behind it, and you know, lots more. So stay tuned and I'll be right back. So we're back now, we're standing now, so you guys can see the beauty of this picture here. And TJ is going to explain to you guys how we started from this here to this and then ending up to this one. Exactly. So um, we, I, I love the fact that our work was progressive. It was a collaborative effort between, like I said, between the, like the, the photographer, Glenn, Sharon and I. So we started with these marks and um we wanted the three to be connected especially these two this represents the calabar culture so these two are from the eastern part of nigeria but like you said we said nigeria has over 350 ethnic groups yeah so these are just like two out of like over 100 cultures over 100 you know ethnic groups that have different and diverse face paint some face paintings can actually come in yellow in pink in red depending but we decided to pick the white and the black to you know to just signify the, the um, like a unanimous color that yeah. kind of thing so we built this into these three up there because the calabars one thing i noticed about them is they love dots they love white dots they can literally go white dots all over their shoulders and their chest so it could be like a body painting basically it takes body it painting. further than just face painting yeah, face marks exactly like. they love lo lots of white dots and you know all over their bodies it's it's something especially for dancers it's something a lot of dancers their dancers do and you know they have it's a beautiful, very, very, very beautiful culture. So like I said earlier, with all due respect to the Calabar people, we tried as much as possible to depict the culture. Just like the evil culture, <laughs> don't come for us, Please okay? Please don't. Blame him. <laughs> Blame Google. <laughs> if we got it wrong, Blame Google. So another thing, before I go ahead, another thing I want to clarify is, I know some people can say it's not epic enough. Well, we were trying to look for something that would depict um, the recent look, uh, but at the same time, almost like modernized. Yeah, modernized look for you know these tribal tribe. marks, tribal so, you know face yeah, painting. Exactly. So, um, like I said, the dots have explained itself, and they just love dots. That's one thing I noticed about Calabar people. They love lots of dots. So we, we had to build this up into a, an inverted triangle about four or three of them on each cheek and then they have their dots and, and from this we then built it up to yeah. this one so we didn't even need to raise this we continued that just mark, continued so. exactly can you see a bit of sustainability there yeah you know what i mean <laughs> and consistency consistency mm -hmm. and another thing i'd like to say quickly is that because it's hard we usually get our inspiration of beading from these looks too so someone can take a look at this and say okay i'm gonna make a bead that has can, that kind of pendant for example this pendant is an african pendant and it's got two horns so this and this are kind of connected because that's just how it is and this looks like a, like a bead a string of bead and so they are all connected you know with each other the dressing the face paint you see the consistency all over again. yeah something like this max were inspired by nature itself isn't it the animals the, you know the yeah features animals have horns that you mentioned teeth you know stripes you know and all those things yeah and royalty and royalty <laughs> so we are on to the next one now and tj is going to explain to us a bit more about this other one a second masterpiece they're all beautiful so can i ask a bit more about like what tribe this um okay be? so like i said earlier i'm actually a yoruba girl so I need to speak about this with all sense of respect and humility and um, 
reverence for the Igbo culture because I'm not an Igbo girl. So before we start, yeah, don't come for us, okay? Please. A disclaimer. <laughs> Wait, she might say something that is wrong, so this is from the research, you know, and things yeah. she heard also. So we try to recreate this. So yeah, a bit of understanding, okay? We're just celebrating all cultures. We're showing love. This is all about love. So if yeah. you're an Igbo there, hi, hello. <laughs> Okay, so um, I feel like this was a collaborative effort between myself and Sharon. We're able to bring something, you know, together and make it work. We kind of improvised, you know, this stuff. And we, I think before we came up with this look, we did research on what, you know, the face paint. So you can blame Google if we're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. somebody have to take the blame. It's not us. Google. <laughs> so this is what uh, this was basically like an image yeah. we found on the internet and i think it was for is it a igbo priestess yes e like an igbo queen queen or yes priestess. So, but mostly is it, we could call it a, a an igbo queen i like to identify with the igbo queen because it's it's bold you know so especially if you look at the leaves the black leaves it's really bold with a gold touch of gold in between that's gold means royalty you know and then we added the we added the gold of course and, all this yeah, to match to match it and um this black dot here you know basically all these paintings are just to like i said we work with highlights and contours but we didn't know that they were called highlights and contours you know we just use it to make the the features of the face you know, to project it more basically and so we we find um colors and um marks that will project the eye shape the lip shape and so we're able to come up with this and one thing i'd like to say is this mark here i find it very very common and means the ego culture because it represents horn a horn so it looks like a horn yeah our forefathers were hunters many of them would go into the forest and then bring back maybe the teeth of a, a, a wild animal or a horn and most of them are they are just like like this shape so okay. sometimes we want to you know play around and then we just use those marks on our bodies and yeah oh thank you very much <laughs> so yes if we're wrong please correct us okay don't come for us <laughs> no insults under the comments only love thank you everyone for listening hopefully this was a bit helpful so we're going to move on to the next series with another artist bye